What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Appreciate you rocking with me. Michael here, not in the office, back in the car, hitting our weekly uh, errands. We're gonna go into a, uh, a two week, I guess I'll call it a two week quarantine, although we're, uh, we're doing Christmas on our own. So it's not really a quarantine so much as a, uh, hey, if we go do all of our shopping for the next couple weeks, we don't have to leave the house and deal with craziness for a couple of weeks. Uh, doing this old school, I got my phone on the Go, uh, not GoPro, what is that? Pop socket mount, so you're gonna see it list to one side periodically and I'll, I'll have to readjust it. But I wanted to give you guys a little quick hit here. Um, I'm gonna be doing probably more of these short videos. Hopefully this one will be about five minutes when it's all said and done. And probably record it on my phone so that I can sort of have them uploading to YouTube while I'm uh, out running errands and things because our internet is just it's getting worse actually so um you know I, I adapt and overcome but um I, I had to tell you guys a little story so I, I finally sold an xbox 360 i've actually sold all three of them we'll get to that in a minute i finally sold the first of them and um didn't even sell for that much i mean it was the the console two controllers and 15 games sold for like 115 dollars it's not even that much uh pure profit on it because of a lot of the other games and things that I got with it and how I was able to part some things out and, uh, and, and really make uh, make up my investment on parting things out and then sort of just making quick profit, well, theoretically quick profit on um, putting out kind of a, a bundle, a system bundle. And it makes sense, it's Christmas time, okay, it's time for them to sell. I spent four hours testing all of those consoles because I assumed when I bought them that if any one of them worked, it would be a good day. Uh, with the 360 being what it is and all of the problems that it had and the fact that when I got them, it was very apparent that they were not well taken care of uh, or at least not hadn't been well taken care of in the last, you know, whatever, 10 years, however long the Xbox One uh, lifespan was. Um, so to my surprise, they all worked and they worked well and I played each of them for uh, at least a half hour uh, if not longer, uh, just to make sure that you know no problems popped up while I was playing. So one sells, I'm happy, I ship it out. Two days later, there's a return open. And his message, his message pissed me off, to be honest. Uh, he, he posted a picture, he goes, power cord will not go all the way in, therefore it won't turn on, therefore it's defective. No, therefore it's not. Therefore you're an idiot, <laughs> you know? Um, and I know he did that so that he could use, because when you, when you end, when you open a return as defective, you're basically, the buyer is basically has no accountability whatsoever. And there's nothing I can do about it. eBay just accepts it automatically, processes it, sends them the, the label, which I pay for. Um, and there's nothing I can do. Now, once I get it back and this is gonna happen, I'm going to test it and I know that the power cord is gonna pop right in and it's gonna fire right up. And, um, and I guess assuming it's even the same console and you didn't do a switcheroo, in which case I'm, I'm screwed because eBay will tell me, you know, tough. They, they, they've told many, many buyers, I've seen lots of videos, lots of recorded conversations. They tell you to work that into your business model, work fraud into your business model. I mean, we're not, we're not Walmart, you know? And even Walmart doesn't work fraud into their business model. They they have complete control over their return policy. They, they shrink it, you know, every time you turn around. It's like, you know, you've got two days to return shit sometimes. Pardon all my profanity, but the, the, the message had me worked up. Um, so then what I'll do is at that point, I'll have to reach out to eBay and say, hey, this is an abuse of the um, defective return process. I should, you know, I shouldn't have to pay for it. And then, and then just hope for the best. And then just hope that that they side with me. And I would say that the odds are 60-40 in, in the buyer's favor. Um, and that's, again, that's presuming that everything that I shipped out comes back, that it's the same stuff that I shipped out. I mean, I'm sort of hoping that he just couldn't, like he just wasn't pushing hard enough. I know that they were kind of a tight kind of pop, but... And that's another thing. There's no opportunity to discuss it with them. The return is automatic. So it's, but my point is, is that I only have this happen with 
heavy electronics. I've had like one or two returns on smaller, you know, regular items for various reasons. Changed mine, wasn't what you thought, blah, 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 blah. Okay, I mean, it's whatever. I don't know, it is what it is. But for some reason, heavy electronics have come back probably 50% of the time. The, the consoles, the video cameras, that that Vitamix uh, blender base that I sold to the lady, I gave that lady a, a sweet deal because she had bought for me before, and then she couldn't figure out how to make it work. She kept saying that it wasn't turning on. It was defective. I'm like, I know this thing worked. I know for a fact it worked. And I walked her through, I troubleshooted with her for two hours, and she's like, I don't know, it's not working, I don't know. I get it back, again, at my expense. I actually ended up keeping shipping costs um, on that. I was able to, uh, to at least do that. Uh, but I had coincidentally received a return on the, um, the shaker cup, which was dumb too. And that was just an oversight on my part. I was moving too fast. Uh, I listed it as, I think, a 16 ounce, and it was actually a 20 ounce or a 24 ounce. And the buyer was mad. They wanted the 16, and so they returned it. And the, the shitty thing about that was that it was just over a pound, so it had to go priority. I was like, you got to be kidding me, <laughs> right? I, I, it was polycarb, I probably could have put it in a flat rate and I was tempted to do it, but I just I just didn't want to tempt it. Um, anyway, so anyways, the point is, is I had that. And so I was able to test the blender. And what it is, is that base has a, um, a chip sensor thing to sense that the blender part is inserted and um, and which one it is because the the menu gives you different options depending on which one's inserted and so I don't know maybe she just found it cheaper elsewhere I'm not sure how um, or maybe she realized that it would work with the blender she had and I don't know who, who knows but I had it back I haven't relisted it it's just been sitting because I just like don't want to deal with it but I'm absolutely done selling heavy electronics on eBay. Um, I've got, matter of fact, I've got that receiver I bought that I cannot believe hasn't sold, but I bought it at a garage sale over the summer. Uh, that thing weighs a ton. I'm guessing the reason it hasn't sold is because it's so heavy. Uh, shipping on it's going to be a bitch to most places. Uh, I'm, I'm done, man. I'm, I'm going to take it down. Um, the day I got the return on the Xbox, I had sold the, another one that morning on my fingers crossed that, that that doesn't come back. And then I had another one sell and they didn't pay and they kind of gave me this, oh, I'm sorry, my grandson must have bought it on accident, I'll pay you on Friday. And I'm like, and at the time I was just sort of like, whatever. But, you know, Friday's come and gone and I haven't been paid and I don't expect to be paid. So once the uh, non-paying non buyer process completes, I'm just taking it down not doing it I, I might I might and at least in the future like you know when I'm out garage selling next you know season obviously I'm not going to turn down opportunities to buy video games and a lot of times they want you to buy the console they want you just to take the whole thing you know um, and uh, God, this road is so damn narrow uh, and um, so I'll still buy the console, but what I'll probably do is I will part every single item out, okay? I'm talking about the controllers. I'm talking about the power cord. If it's got a proprietary uh, video cable, like on a Nintendo system, okay? And then the console, I will sell as is for parts because then they can't return it. And I don't know. I might make a little bit less because I'm selling it for parts. I might make a little bit more because I'm parting everything out. It might be washed. I might make the same amount of money regardless. Um, or, or perhaps simultaneously, I'll list it complete locally uh, and sell it that way. And in fact, the only reason I don't sell locally now is I just don't have the time. You know, you guys already know I live deep. This video is already twice as long as I wanted it to be. I already live deep um, and I work full time and we got a newborn. And so, uh, you know, the the... It's hard enough for me to go out to make buys or to go to garage sales. So to add on to that, having to meet people to uh, pick up stuff. But if my contract ever ends, 
<laughs> hopefully, uh, and I'm able to go full time with reselling, um, then I'll, I'll start selling locally for sure. Um, and probably sell pretty hardcore locally. We have a pretty robust local buy sell trade uh, community, it seems like. So, um, you know, you got to get the right price, you got to price it right. Uh, but, um, but it's there. And if I'm full time, I'm going to be going over to, you know, the big city, so to speak, uh, fairly frequently. So, you know, if I had to widen my, my selling radius, you know, and maybe make some trips uh, across the pond, so to speak, uh, then that's what I'll do. So anyway, uh, I'm, I'm done. I'm done with heavy electronics on eBay. Um, I've been thinking about being done with electronics on eBay for a long time. Um, you know, as long as I've been at it basically, but for basically since I had that wave of camcorder problems, I was like, this is no bueno. Okay. Um, I sold all four of the Wii's too, uh, in the last couple weeks. And one of those came back. Now that return, uh, the same buyer bought all four. Okay. So that was awesome. Uh, the, cause they'd been sitting, I couldn't believe that I still had them. I, I, I thought maybe I had just missed the, the window and one of them came back. Uh, as uh, wouldn't read discs, discs and of course I was like it sure as hell does read discs I tested all of them but I got it back and I checked the serial numbers everything was a match and the funny thing was is it wasn't even the kind of dirty one it was one of the clean ones uh, that came back and I tested it again and sure enough not only would it not read the disc but it, it crashed uh, so something happened in storage or in shipping who knows uh, or or maybe maybe it was my screw up maybe I thought I tested it and did it I don't know uh, at this point, but so, okay, fine. That one's granted, not mad about that. You know, disappointed obviously, cause that was 50 bucks, but you know, uh, I'm not, that's that, that kind of return is part of doing business. That's the kind of thing you work into your business model. People that can't figure out how to plug in the power cable is not something you should have to work into your business model. Um, one thing again, that I, I appreciate about Macari is that they, encourage everybody to make the sale successful you know it's not a great platform for a lot of reasons um a lot of reasons and it's now you know more expensive than ebay uh, but they're like i said before their chat function is far superior and they're they're sort of focus on making the deal happen is far superior the the culture is different there in a very good way um I don't think I would have had this happen on Macari. I don't think. Um, and in fact, the time I sold electronics on there, uh, the guy opened it up and soldered it and fixed it. And he didn't even ask for any of his money back. <laughs> you know, like how awesome is that, right? So um, I don't know. I do intend to go back on Macari. I've been thinking about this a lot lately about what I'm gonna do once I go full time, um, definitely selling locally, definitely going to get back on Macari, even though the fees are high at this point, I'm paying high fees on eBay anyway, because, uh, you've got the managed payment fees added in there. And to a certain extent, those are kind of a wash with PayPal, but it's not exactly a wash. Um, and, and I'm doing promoted listings on everything and I figure anything that, that increases eyeballs is going to be good. And I'll probably get on, honestly, I'll probably get on all the selling platforms at some point, uh, plus Facebook marketplace to sell locally. So anyway, uh, yeah, that's it for this one. Appreciate you guys like subscribe, share. I'm done selling electronics on eBay. You feel me? I'll see you next time.